Hi, Trinity on the Hill. I'm Mark Carpenter, facility manager. Standing atop the back side of the bell tower overlooking the roofing project we have going on here today uh, and the rest of this week and next week and probably the couple of weeks after that. Uh, I'm here to bring the word of encouragement today and I wouldn't want to start that this week specifically without speaking directly to Sandy and Scott on behalf of the congregation. We just want you to know that our thoughts and prayers are with you, that we love you, that we're here for you, and that we are so thankful for the hope that we have in our faith in Jesus Christ and in June's faith in Jesus Christ, that she is no longer sick, that she is completely healed. And for that, we are grateful. We love you, and we can't wait to see you. In the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 6, verses 25 to 34, Jesus speaks about worry. Therefore I tell you, in verse 25, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or drink, or about your body, what you will wear. It's, is not life more than food and the body more than clothes? Look at the birds of the air. They do not sow or reap and store away in barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not much more valuable than they? Can any one of you, by worrying, add a single hour to your life? And why do you worry about clothes? See how the flowers of the field grow? They do not labor or spin. Yet I tell you that no, not even Solomon in all his splendor was dressed like one of these. If that is how God clothes the grass of the fields, which is here today and tomorrow thrown into the fire, will he not much more clothe you, you of little faith? So do not worry, saying, What shall we eat, or what shall we drink? Or what shall we wear? For the pagans run after all these things, and your heavenly Father knows that you need them. But seek first His kingdom and His righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. I don't know about you, but I tend to worry. Prior to taking this job a little over a year and a half ago, Maria and I ran our own home repair, remodeling, and light commercial business. As with any business, it comes with its own barrage of worries. Will I have work? Will I be able to get to the work? Um, will the customer be satisfied? Will everyone work safely? Um, and the list goes on and on. After taking this job, will we be okay financially? Can I handle such a large campus? Will I be able to learn the ropes? Will the congregation be satisfied? And the list goes on. I once heard it said, don't borrow worry. In other words, do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. Obviously, this is easier said than done. When Maria was diagnosed with cancer a year ago, by the way, her recent scan just came back all clear. I worried. However, she immediately went to Joshua 1, 7 through 9. Be strong and very courageous. Be careful to obey all the law my servant Moses gave you. Do not turn from it to the right or to the left, that you may be successful wherever you go. Keep this book of the law always on your lips. Meditate on it day and night so that you may be careful to do everything written in it. Then you will be prosperous and successful. Verse 9, Have I not commanded you? Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. For the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. She led me to focus on Jesus. Another worry I encountered was the fact that every building on campus except for the sanctuary in the Garen house, had roofs that were at end of life. My worries were, where's the next leak gonna show up? How much damage will it do? How will we be able to afford to replace the roofs? Which roof should we do first? I was very literally borrowing worry. Well, except for the leak part. It turns out that through our faithful and generous congregation, and the Lord's protection, we are now in the process of replacing all the roofing and eliminating the worry of 
where will the next leak come from, at least due to age. These are just a few examples of many I could share about my experience with worry. Through these, I am reminded of one thing that can cure it all. Keep your eyes on Jesus. In, later on in Matthew chapter 14, after Jesus has fed the 5,000, He sent the disciples ahead in the boat while He went to be alone and pray. Verse 25, Shortly before dawn, Jesus went out to them, walking on the lake. When the disciples saw Him walking on the lake, they were terrified. It's a ghost, they said, and cried out in fear. But Jesus immediately said to them, Take courage, it is I. Don't be afraid. Peter said, Lord, if it is you, tell me to come to you on the water. Come, Jesus said. Peter needed to be convinced. After Jesus said, Come, then Peter got down out of the boat, walked on the water, and came toward Jesus. But when he was distracted by the wind, he became afraid. He turned his focus and began to sink, crying out, Lord, save me. Immediately, Jesus reached out his hand and caught him. You of little faith, he said, why did you doubt? We worry because we doubt. Keep your eyes on Jesus. Know that He will never leave you or forsake you. Do not worry. Turn off the news. Don't be discouraged. Be encouraged.